Welcome to St. Edward's Church Leek for our service of morning worship on this second Sunday before Advent. My name is the Reverend Nigel Irons and it's my prayer that you'll be nourished and enriched and meet with God as you share with us in this service together. We begin by singing our first hymn. God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So now, let us with confidence in the mercy of God, confess our sins to our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry, and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may God our Heavenly Father, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. 
You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And the collect for today, the second Sunday before Advent. Heavenly Father, whose blessed Son was revealed to destroy the works of the devil and to make us the children of God and heirs of eternal life. Grant that we, having this hope, may purify ourselves even as he is pure, that when he shall appear in power and great glory, we may be made like him in his eternal and glorious kingdom, where he is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. This reading is taken from Zephaniah, chapter 1, verses 7 through to 18. Be silent for the Sovereign Lord, for the day of the Lord is near. The Lord has prepared a sacrifice. He has consecrated those he has invited. On the day of the Lord's sacrifice, I will punish the princes and the king's sons, and all those clad in foreign clothes. On that day I will punish all who avoid stepping on the threshold, who fill the temple of their gods with violence and deceit. On that day, declares the Lord, a cry will go up from the fish gate, wailing from the new quarter, and a loud crash from the hills. Wail, you who live on the market district. All your merchants will be wiped out. All who trade with silver will be ruined. At that time I will search Jerusalem with lamps and punish those who are complacent, who are like wine left on its dregs, who think the Lord will do nothing, either good or bad. Their wealth will be plundered, their houses demolished. They will build houses but not live in them. They will plant vineyards but not drink their wine. The great day of the Lord is near, near and coming quickly. Listen. The cry of the day of the Lord will be bitter. The shouting of the warriors there, that day will be a day of wrath, a day of distress and anguish, a day of trouble and ruin, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness, a day of trumpet and battle cry against the fortified cities and against the corner towers. I will bring distress on the people and they will walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood will be poured out like dust and their entrails like filth. Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them. On the day of the Lord's wrath, in the fire of his jealousy, the whole world will be consumed, for he will make a sudden end of all who live in the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. New Testament reading is from 1 Thessalonians, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as their labour pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all the sons of the light and the sons of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be alert and self-controlled. For those who sleep and sleep at night and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us put on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just in fact, as you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
And now we'll sing our second hymn. Help us accept each other as Christ accepted us. Teach us as sister brother each person to the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents of money, to another two talents, and to another one talent each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. The man who had received the five talents went at once and put the money to work and gained five more. So also the one with the two talents gained two more. But the man who had received the one talent went off, dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those servants returned and settled accounts with them. The man who had received the five talents brought the other five. Master, he said, you entrusted me with five talents. See, I have gained five more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share your master's happiness. The man with the two talents also came. Master, he said, you entrusted me with two talents. See, I have gained two more. His master replied, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Come and share in your master's happiness. Then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, he said, I knew that you were a hard man, harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. So I was afraid and went out and hid your talent in the ground. See, here is what belongs to you. 
His master replied, You wicked, lazy servant. So, you knew that I harvest where I have not sown, and gather where I have not scattered seed? Well then, you should have put my money on deposit with the bankers, so that when I returned, I would have received it back with interest. Take the talent from him, and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For everyone who has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. And throw that worthless servant into the outside, into the darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that as we reflect on your word, you will meet us afresh by the power of your Holy Spirit and grant us ears to hear, minds to understand and hearts to receive your truth. In Jesus' name. Amen. It has been said that fencing is the perfect coronavirus sport because you wear a mask, you wear a glove, and if anyone comes within two metres, you jab them. Well, we are currently in what is called the kingdom season of the liturgical year. And this week we have heard the exciting news that one of the vaccines being developed against COVID-19 could be up to 90% effective. This spells judgment for the virus. Our two Bible readings today are about judgment too, not of a virus, but of humanity. The first reading speaks about the certainty of judgment, not just any old casual judgment, but a judgment described in terrifying detail, a judgment that is final and that encompasses everyone on the face of the earth. A judgment executed by God, who has the kingly authority to judge, because he is the supreme being in all creation, which is itself the work of his hands. The second reading then develops the first in the light of the hope that the New Testament brings us. It affirms that judgment is in no doubt, but it also flips the coin of judgment over and presents us what is on its reverse, which is salvation for those who have come to the light of Jesus Christ. This salvation is provided because of and backed by his authority as the king of all kings. It's my task to make sense of these readings in a way which can help us and give us challenge and direction in our daily living. So I want to pull out from each side of the coin a few things that we can set as markers which define the boundaries that God has set before us and invites us to stay within. Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians speaks about darkness and light. And those opposites are a good summary of the two sides of the coin. Darkness accompanied by judgment and light accompanied by salvation. The passages we've heard invite us to ask ourselves whether we are people of darkness or people of the light. So if we look at the characteristics of each of those types of people, we will have some benchmarks against which to examine ourselves. The people of darkness, what are they like? Zephaniah portrays them as idol worshippers. Unfortunately, Today, when we hear that term, we are immediately tempted to dismiss the possibility that it could apply to us without a second thought. Here in the UK, we don't have many idols, do we? There are, of course, some idols in the temples and places of worship of other religions, 
But no Christian church contains idols. We believe in one God and therefore don't try to appease any other perceived gods or look to them to sustain our well-being or give us protection or healing or peace of mind. That's obvious, we think. It doesn't apply. But the truth is that we can all very easily get sucked into idolatry in one form or another. In essence, an idol is something that takes the place of God in our lives. So that includes anything which we turn to for things that only God can truly provide. And if we think of idols in that way, they can be many and varied. Where do we look for security? Many people seek security in material wealth. And only when they have amassed enough of it to sustain the lifestyle of their choice and provide for unexpected emergencies do they feel truly secure. Where do we look for satisfaction? Many people seek satisfaction from physical experiences which they can afford to indulge in and which can take over their lives. Some turn to sex, or alcohol, or drugs, or other pursuits which can often be quite expensive and if left unchecked end up dominating their thinking. Where do we look for fulfilment? If we are wise we will recognize that true fulfilment has to be more than just a collection of different experiences. Fulfilment has to be a strand which runs through our heart and mind and is founded on knowing that we are doing something that we are gifted at well. But for some, that thing may have a negative or destructive influence on others. If we become skilled at passing judgment, we may find it fulfilling to criticise others. If we become skilled at exercising power, we may find it fulfilling to manipulate others. If we become skilled at cunning and deceit, we may find it fulfilling to see how much we can get away with. These things define who we are, and the places we go to find them shape our lives. What God wants us to know is that he has set the promise of security, satisfaction and fulfilment before everyone who comes to him. Security in knowing that our sins are forgiven. Satisfaction in discovering the depth of Jesus' love for us. And fulfilment in following his way of self-sacrifice, rather than living only for ourselves. Those who neglect the pursuit of the spiritual are only left with the material. And Zephaniah makes clear that ultimately the material world and material pursuits are worthless in the sight of God. He made and owns everything, so he will never be impressed by whatever possessions we manage to amass, however great they may be. And of course, some people have unimaginable wealth, like whoever bought Leonardo da Vinci's portrait, Saviour of the World, three years ago, for $450 million. None of us will ever have that kind of money, but whatever we have isn't of importance at all to God. So we find Zephaniah writing, Neither their silver nor their gold will be able to save them on the day of the Lord's wrath. Our second reading brings us hope. It confirms that the day of the Lord is indeed going to happen and that it will be a day of destruction for many. But it then goes on to assure us that this will not be the fate of all and need not be ours. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness. You are all children of the light and children of the day. That's the exciting and encouraging element of this passage. But it is also the challenging part, too. 
Paul goes on to explain that if we are indeed walking in the light, then this must affect the way we live. He contrasts the things people do at night, like sleeping and getting drunk, with the things they do during the day, like staying sober and active. Of course, in the physical world, we all need sleep, but Paul is using the image of light and darkness in the physical world as an example of the kind of things we should be engaged with in the spiritual realm. He is saying that as God's people, we need to stay spiritually alert and spiritually active. And he especially singles out faith, love and hope as qualities that people of the light should pursue. Trusting in the power of God's mercy expressed to us in Jesus Christ to secure their salvation, as opposed to the idolatry, selfishness and indifference which characterises the lives of those who choose to live their way instead of God's. Our readings therefore outline to us the characteristics of those walking in the darkness and those walking in the light of Jesus. And they invite us to measure our own lives against those benchmarks. The experience of sanctification and the call to holiness is an ongoing process which each of us who has come to Christ begins when we first put our faith in him and which continues for the rest of our lives. Our lives become a mixture of light and darkness. But of course, as our faith and discipleship grow, God's intention is that the darkness diminishes and the light becomes stronger. As men and women of faith, we are people of the light. But we do also need to stand back and reflect on how much of that light we are allowing to shine in us and through us, and how much of the way of the world we still cling to and base our thinking on. As we do that during this season, we can then offer afresh to God any ways of thinking which we come to recognise are not yet redeemed, not yet surrendered, and not yet aligned with his will. So let's give the Holy Spirit permission to challenge us and direct us through these passages of Scripture which remind us of the certainty of God's final judgment, the worthlessness of material pursuits, our inability to buy or earn his favour and our need to depend on the mercy he freely bestows on all who choose to trust in him. And having made the choice to trust. He calls us also to make the choice to be transformed, to make the journey from darkness to light, not just in our hearts and minds, but in the practical outworking of faith in our daily lives. As children of the light, our natural habitat is watchfulness and service, and our calling is to embrace the pursuit of faith, love and hope. Any time we choose to spend away from that habitat or in pursuit of other things is a form of idolatry which is damaging to our spiritual growth. Jesus calls us to set aside the ways of the world. God did not appoint us to suffer wrath but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the certainty that one day you will judge the world, destroy all that is evil, and bring in the eternal kingdom of your Son. May we trust in your mercy, and may you find faith in us all on that day. Jesus, 
thank you that you have secured the path of salvation and brought the light of grace and truth into the darkness of the world. Empower us with your love so that we stay alert and active in your service. Holy Spirit, thank you that you have the power to do things with us and in us and through us that we can never do for ourselves. Renew our hope day by day and guide us safely through this life to the next. Amen. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. together to God our Father. Let us pray for his peace and wisdom in the world 
and in all Christian churches. Lord, may all who acknowledge and trust in you be faithful stewards of what you have entrusted to us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this time of the coronavirus pandemic, we pray for those who are ill at home, for those who are in quarantine, in hospital, those who are dying. We pray for those they love and are loved by. We pray for those who are caring for them, our NHS staff, carers, volunteers, and for all across the world in similar roles. Lord, care for them. Fill them with your peace, love and hope that they may rest in you and gain strength and courage to carry them through each day and long night. We pray for those who have lost family, friends, colleagues to COVID-19. Also those who are because of COVID filled with sadness, despair, anxiety. Those struggling with the loss of freedom, the lack of physical contact and companionship, the loss of income and livelihood. Give them hope for today and their tomorrows. We pray for all essential workers. Give them peace, hope and the sense of a valued job well done. We have all learned over the months to appreciate and recognise the difference between desirable and essential. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our prayer. Grant merciful Lord, politicians locally, nationally and worldwide, great wisdom, real knowledge, deep commitment, right judgment and stamina at this unprecedented time. We now all, more than ever, appreciate the work of research scientists. We see the fruits of their work as a way out of this pandemic, a way back to normality. Lord, what so many don't see is the gifts you gave these scientists. The ability to learn, the hunger to discover, teachers and mentors with the gift of wonderful teaching. We thank you, Father of all, for giving gifts to each of us. Some may seem more important, but all are important in a myriad of ways. We thank you for giving gifts to all. Give us the courage, the confidence and the wisdom to recognise and use them to your glory and the benefit of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Anna Sims, our link missionary in Peru, for the work she has done and is still doing with the prisoners in Lima, despite the tighter COVID restrictions on visiting. We pray that they and Anna are able to move closer to you, to strengthen their relationship with you, to draw comfort and solace in these desperate times. Lord, grant wisdom to the authorities as they run the prison. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For some, Lord, their life has altered forever. Be with those who are grieving, mourning the death of a loved one. Stand alongside them, hold them, so they know you are there. Know that no pit of despair is too deep for you. Grant them your peace that passes all understanding. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers. prayers. For, for the, the sake, sake of your, your Son, our, our Saviour, 
Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. God is love. And those who live in love live in God. And God lives in them. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace 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 be with you from the Isle of Skye. Peace be with you. 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 And now we'll sing our third hymn. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. 
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with Edward, John and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. And as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. May he open our hearts afresh to the power of his love, as we remember the sacrifice of Christ. And let us commit ourselves afresh to follow him in the way of the cross. Amen. O God, by whose command the order of time runs its course, forgive our impatience, perfect our faith, and, while we wait for the fulfilment of your promises, grant us to have a good hope because of your word, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we sing our final hymn.
And so now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and in the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father who has created us, the Son who has redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit who breathes God's life, light and love into our hearts, rest upon you, remain with you, guard you, guide you, keep you, and strengthen you in his service today and always. Amen. Thank you for joining us for our service here this morning. We hope that you'll be able to join us again next week for our service of all-age celebration.